next I'd like to welcome to the stage Mariah Gladstone of the Blackfeet Nation and one of my uh, personal superheroes. Um, so I'm actually going to give kind of a how-to rundown specifically relating to digital media, social media, um, in our fight for food sovereignty. Um, I am from the Blackfeet Nation in Montana. My mom is enrolled in Tahlequah, down at the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma. Um, if you're wondering who the heck I am and why I'm telling you all of this, um, it's totally unrelated to my bachelor's degree, that's for sure. Um, but I'm currently studying environmental science um, in Syracuse, New York, and a certificate of advanced studies, which is kind of like a master's minor um, in food studies. So I'm off in upstate New York. Again, I don't know why I keep going to school in New York when I'm from Montana. It's a personal flaw. Um, but I am the founder of Indigi Kitchen. So uh, I've started a business that revolves around teaching people information about traditional foods using digital media. Um, oftentimes it's really exciting and I get to use my engineering degree solely for jerry-rigging the camera like you see in that picture. Um, but I'll briefly get into what we're going through. Um, you guys know social media is everywhere. There's probably a lot of you uh, on your phones right now. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's not just millennials. I know who you are out there. Um, little glows on your faces. Um, so this was a survey from usership of different social media platforms. This is specific to 2019. So YouTube and Facebook are obviously used most out of all the platforms followed by Instagram. Um, and then of course, um, Snapchat and Instagram are specifically the most popular among uh, 18 to 24 year olds. So there's not too many folks over the age of 30 that are using Snapchat. Um, just like Facebook usership actually tends to be more um, baby boomers. The average Facebook user is uh, a middle class white woman who was born in the 50s, uh, which is fascinating. I don't, now you know. Um, the point is everyone's using social media, uh, different forms um, and obviously different formats, but we'll talk about some of them. I'm going to give you guys some different tools for reaching out to people um, since this is about fight fighting for food sovereignty. I could have called them weapons, but I'm not going to get that deep into the metaphor. Um, the first, we're going to go with memes. You guys know memes? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I started thinking about memes for this presentation, and there's not that many native food memes, and unfortunately, almost all of them are fry bread related. Um, so I had to make you guys some memes to get my point across. So. I think, I think memes are really important because you know the message that they're conveying, but it's kind of a way of infiltrating past that hard shell that people have. And I think it also works as a really effective way to change uh, our social perceptions of things. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop with the memes now. You guys get the idea. Um, I'm going to need someone to create a lot more native food sovereignty related memes because I'm not that creative. Um, and I think it would be cool to watch the entire cultural perspective around food shift from fry bread centered to things relating to native foods. Um, what other tools we have? Video. Um, video is a format that I originally started working in. Um, show you guys what I do in a second, but there's also live streaming. So when you go Facebook Live or Instagram Live, um, and you're kind of giving people that first-hand view into your world and what's happening, I will say that the difference between video and live stream um, and when you should use different formats, obviously video is great if you have that time to sit there and edit and really put together a nice, lovely packaged uh, packaged product, but if you're doing 
a live stream. I think a lot of people will just go live and record a whole extended process. Um, and people will click onto it, and then they'll look at it for 10 seconds, maybe. And nah, 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 I'll put it down, right? They'll turn off. Um, so using live stream for a tool to get your message out is really effective if you're jumping right into the action that you're showing and it's gonna catch people's attention and hold them. Um, I watched a whole bunch of people on a live stream on Facebook. You can see how many people are watching, right? Watch a car that got stuck on a beach in the hurricane. Just watch a car get tossed around by the waves. Like, people are fascinating what they'll watch on live stream. Um, I don't do any live stream stuff. I actually put together videos of making different native foods. We'll see if this video will roll or if it'll just advance the next slide. Just kidding, it won't play for you guys. Now you're gonna have to follow me. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you that later. Um, other tools in this toolbox, pictures, obviously. Um, if you can show off native food through really beautifully done photography, that helps a lot. Um, as do stories. Who knows what a story is as relating to social media? Okay, so Snapchat was the inventor of the story idea. You have pictures in a series that you put up and they'll stay up for 24 hours. So it's creating basically a slideshow that people can click through for 24 hours. Um, Instagram and Facebook now do stories as well. And I found that stories are really effective in communicating certain things. So these are pictures. Um, this is a recipe. It's been time to post, so it is now live as of the time that I started giving this presentation. There's a new video on my YouTube channel and my Facebook. Um, but showcasing things in really pretty artsy ways, for better or for worse, people are more likely to share that and you're more likely to get your message out when you use pretty pictures. Um, I get a lot of media requests in the things that I do and I make it a point to have high definition photos that are either professionally taken or I've taken using my good camera uh, that I can send to reporters that are looking for things that I have. A lot of times we see native food stories get printed and the only picture that's in there is like a little grainy cell phone picture. Um, so I think taking good pictures helps you spread your word more easily. Um, I would love to tell you that it is just the stories, but people are more likely to share things and the algorithms, unfortunately, on a lot of these sites will show you things with pictures and prioritize that over just words. Stories. One of my favorite stories that I've done recently was making muskrat soup <laughs> live did this whole thing on a story so people could watch it for the next 24 hours. Um, we actually made muskrat soup, including uh, used bow drills to make the fire. So we have this whole thing in pictures with captions up and people were watching this entire thing on my Instagram story and sending in messages like, was it good? How did it taste? What did you do? What's going on here? <laughs> which was great because people were learning about something new and I knew they were engaging with the material. They were asking questions and learning something they didn't even know they had signed up to learn. And because I know you all on your phones, you can take them out and follow me. Thanks guys. If you have questions, save them till the end. <laughs> 